Hey everyone, it's Flackfire. The weekend was an interesting one for Star Wars Battlefront 2, and it raises some serious questions about the future of the game. The game's Reddit community tore into the new loot crate system in the game, calling it pay to win. Players also rioted over the progression system, which locked some characters behind a somewhat insane amount of credits. Responses from EA on the topic have been less than satisfactory, according to Redditors. A post from the EA community team on Reddit has nearly half a million downvotes. The post, which has to do with the progression system for unlocking heroes, is now the most downvoted post in the history of Reddit. Some have even attacked the series' community managers and developers directly, with several receiving death threats. YouTube and Twitch influencers covering the game were not immune either, and that unfortunately includes me. I have never said I speak for the community, and I routinely tell you guys to give developers feedback directly and even provide links to do so. Any opportunity I get to speak directly with developers or community managers, I use to communicate what I read in the comments on my videos or what I see on social media, regardless if I think they're valid concerns or not. I do this to try and improve the game experience for you. Beyond that, it's out of my hands. And this is an obligation that I take pretty seriously, so forgive me for getting a little offended. And while I understand the situation is frustrating, I think most of us agree personally attacking someone is never acceptable. Now, EA just put out a news bulletin indicating they will drastically be altering the cost required to unlock heroes in Star Wars Battlefront 2. Instead of 60,000 credits, which some calculations say will take around 40 hours to unlock, they will cost significantly less. Specifically, Iden Versio will cost 5,000 credits, Chewbacca, the Emperor, and Princess Leia will cost 10,000 credits, and the iconic Luke Skywalker and Darth Vader tip the scales at 15,000 credits. The changes will placate some players, though many on Reddit remain unimpressed. And I understand, why not have more obscure characters like Bosk be unlockable heroes? This takes the sting out of the system, gives players the opportunity to play as their childhood heroes, and still gives them something to work towards. While the changes do make unlocking heroes easier, it still does nothing to resolve issues with the loot crate system, which many see as pay to win. I made a video the other day explaining my thoughts on the crate system, and a good number of people ignored the numerous negative things I said about that system. Specifically, I said it's not perfect, it needs to only include cosmetics, it does provide an advantage, and I definitely would have done it differently. It's also important to remember throughout this that Star Wars Battlefront 2 doesn't have a premium pass, and all future DLC for the game will be free. I expected some kind of trade-off with that, and other games like Call of Duty Advanced Warfare have done this far worse, still combining supply drops and the season pass. The question now shifts to how EA will react to the loot crate debacle, and if that will be enough. In my opinion, loot crates don't need items like star cards in them, and I've said that before. Star Wars has a rich universe filled to the brim with lore and inspiration on which to lean for cosmetic items. I'd love the option to equip my stormtrooper with Sev's helmet from Republic Commando, or some kind of tribute on my X-Wing to the legendary pilot Jack Porkins. There's also a ton of potential with the character emotes, as I mentioned in the previous video. Bottom line here, removing star cards from crates pretty much removes the entire pay-to-win discussion. In my opinion, they just don't need to be there. Cosmetic items are appealing enough, and hopefully developers will consider this route. It works for other games like Overwatch, and Star Wars has way more compelling lore. It's not clear at this point if EA will make any changes to loot crates, but I'd expect to see an announcement soon. Whether or not changes can be made prior to the game's official launch is also an unknown. Developers say change will be constant with Star Wars Battlefront 2, and so far that is encouraging to me. The sad truth in all this is that by all accounts, Star Wars Battlefront 2 is at its core a great game. From what I've played, the campaign featuring Iden Versio is shaping up to be a solid and compelling single-player experience. The infantry and vehicle combat in multiplayer is epic, with massive maps that capture the true nature of a space opera. The locations and characters come alive and fill you with waves of childhood nostalgia. Loot crate system aside, developers did one hell of a job. 
And that's why all of this is so frustrating. It literally makes my heart hurt that Star Wars Battlefront 2 has been completely engulfed in controversy. I grew up with the Star Wars films, and I wore out the tapes. I still remember where the commercial breaks were on the bootleg copies my parents recorded from television. It's an important part of my childhood and so many others' childhoods, and it saddens me immensely that I'm not able to enjoy the game just for what it brings to the Star Wars universe. But what do you think EA should do with Star Wars Battlefront 2? What still needs to change? Tell me your opinions in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. Share on social media like Facebook and Twitter, and be sure to subscribe. Turn on notifications for the latest news on your favorite games. Thanks for watching.